Today we're going to talk about the element of design balance. Now when we talk about balance in an art class, it's a little different than when you talk about balance in another class. Uh, when we talk about balance here, what we're going to be talking about is visual weight. What you want to have uh, in your art is you want to have the visual weight uh, spread nicely around the drawing in a pleasing kind of way. So what is visual weight? If I put this picture up here, there's two objects. Uh, which one of them do you think has more visual weight? Now, there's no real right or wrong answer because there's lots of different reasons why you would say one is has more visual weight over the other. Most people say the one on the left, mainly because it's bigger or it's darker or it has a little bit of shading on it so it looks round. Uh, but you could also say maybe the other one because it's more complicated. But then again, the other one looks like something that's big and heavy, like a bowling ball, and the other one looks like something light and fluffy, like a, uh, like a snowflake. So there's lots of ways of describing visual weight. Now, most people, when you look at this, if I asked which one had more visual weight, would say uh, the red square. Okay? Usually they say because, oh, it's, 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 he it's darker, it looks heavier, it's standing out more against the background. Uh, now, that is a key part there. Uh, there is not really a right or wrong answer for this. If I change the background around, ooh, now if, if I ask people, a lot of people change their answer to the yellow. And they're, well, the yellow, now the yellow's got more visual weight. It's jumping out at me. It's, it's, it's popping out against that black background. The visual weight is not just intrinsic to uh, each object you're, that you have. It is part of the whole balance of the uh, of the artwork that you're looking at. Okay, let's change uh, here for a second. What is symmetry? Do you know what symmetry is? Okay, symmetry is when something is the same on both sides. Like if you take a butterfly, a butterfly, it's the same on one side as the other. You can see there's a line of symmetry going right down in the middle. You might have learned that in your science class. Uh, now there's two types of balance. There's symmetrical balance where things are very equal on both sides and there's asymmetrical balance when it is not equal on both sides but is still balancing the visual weight in a nice way. Uh, here's an example of asymmetrical balance. So you can see there's there's more things on this side, uh, but there's a bigger thing over here, and it's uh, it's a darker color, so it pops out more. So we're balancing, but it's not uh, it's not just the same things on both sides. Uh, for instance, you could take a look at this drawing here. We've got symmetrical balance. He's uh, right down the center. It's the same on both sides. He's got two eyes one on each side. But this one, it's a little bit different. Her head's tilted. Her hair is falling over more to this way. But they balance this. Uh, they're balancing this side with this other side. We've got this little part of her dress there. You can see that it's very intricate, so there's a lot of details there. And this helps balance against uh, uh, the visual weight being too heavy on one side. Uh, asymmetrical balance in general is a little bit more challenging to, uh, to get correct than doing uh, symmetrical balance. Okay, let's play a little game. We'll put something up here, and I'm gonna see if it's symmetrical balance or asymmetrical balance. You just uh, sh you know shout it out at home uh, with which one you think it is. So which one, symmetrical or asymmetrical? Ah, uh, you're right. It's symmetrical. This one's pretty easy. They're they're pretty much the same on both sides. How about that one, symmetrical or asymmetrical? Ooh, you got that right too. Asymmetrical. So you can see it's got something big over here, and it's being balanced with with smaller stuff on the other side. Okay, now this one gets a little more tricky. Symmetrical or asymmetrical. Now this one, symmetrical or asymmetrical. What do you mean, Mr. Boyd? Well, what I'm saying is depends how you define it. Uh, if I cut this right down the middle, you can see that this side has a T and this is an E. So it's not exactly symmetrical. Uh, but if you decided to uh, talk about purely the visual weight, like if I kind of blurred this out a little bit and you didn't really think about uh, the words, but you just saw the visual weight, then that would say it would be uh, symmetrical because the visual weight is balanced even if it's not a perfectly symmetrical uh, piece of art. How about that? Symmetrical or asymmetrical? Oh, that's asymmetrical because you can see uh, the car is uh, sideways. You know, it's it's uh, if I cut it, this picture right down the center, uh, it would not be the same on both sides. Now, a car would pretty much be the same on both sides, I, although I guess you got the steering wheel. Uh, but if you move the camera down here in the front or the back, you would say it'd be a lot more symmetrical. But when you're looking at it, we're looking at this actual photograph. It is definitely asymmetrical. We are going to be getting into our summative assessment. We've talked about some other ideas today, but we need to get back to our portrait drawing. Uh, so what you're going to do today is you're going to turn your art journal sideways. 
and you're going to draw a portrait with a background. Now, you can bounce the portrait and the background using symmetrical or asymmetrical balance. Hmm, how's that going to look? Uh, faces should have an expression that connects to the background. So if there's something scary in the background, they should have a scary face. If there's something happy in the background, they should have a happy face. Okay, uh, and we are going to ink and color the drawings. Don't forget to shade the face like we did before. Let's take a look at some examples. So. This one is definitely asymmetrical. We've got the face is off to the side and uh, the background uh, is, is filling out the visual weight. But do try and put something interesting in there. You know, uh, you wanna add something fun like they added this orca jumping out. And I know what you're saying, Mr. Boyd, I don't know how to draw an orca, that sounds really hard. Well, this person that did this didn't know how to draw an orca either. They went onto the land of the internet and said, how do I draw an orca? So you should be using references for everything. Same thing with these clouds. They're not just perfectly round puffy clouds. They kind of look like real clouds. They probably looked at a photograph or a drawing of clouds. So make sure you're using references for everything. Okay, so we got a symmetrical one. Again, I said, like I said, you can draw more than one uh, face if you want to. And then they've got the happy background. So I'm seeing asymmetrical. She's off to here. We got a bunch of stuff. Oh, look at that. There's a little Nemo. Again, definitely using reference photos for everything that you draw in the background. Ooh, dark and creepy. It doesn't have to be fun and happy, uh, but of course, does need to be school appropriate. So no guns, no bombs, no people getting shot in the face with flamethrowers. Okay, we do need to keep it school appropriate. Okay, but if you do want to do something uh, creepy, uh, that's okay. Oh, and if you do really want for your file, you can do it vertically. That is okay. Um, I do like to do it sideways because it's easier to do asymmetrical, but if you do want to go vertical, you can go vertical. Okay, so remember for your summative painting, uh, you need to follow the rules for the face. You need to have an emotion. You need to have a background that relates. It can be symmetric or asymmetric balance. Um, and for the colors, you can use either expressionistic style or more realistic style. So that means uh, the current sort of crazy bright colors we used, or if you want to use more realistic colors. All right. So let's get to work on those in your books. Uh, and uh, uh, good luck.